Welcome back to another part of the DIY portable power station build. And first of all, I want to apologize to everyone that's been waiting on this. Uh, I've had a slew of, of personal mishaps go on lately, so that has slowed me down quite a bit. Also, this is not my full-time job. I do have a, a full-time job, so I, I've been out on work and haven't been able to get around to this, so I've had to squeeze in little bits at a, at a time. Um, and haven't been able to film all of it. So right now I'm gonna try to walk you around it, uh, what I've done, and then at a later point in the video, we're gonna focus in on each individual part and uh, hopefully give you a better idea. So if you plan on following this guide, you can, you can build it successfully. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is this temperature switch right here. This is the temperature switch that is uh, being used to turn on these 5 volt fans. This one being an intake, this one being an exhaust. And so this one, it takes in voltage. It has a normally open contactor and you just feed in a wire at a certain temperature. It's going to close that contactor and energize whatever circuit you brought into it. However, this, uh, this is designed to, to um, only accept a voltage and send it out. So it doesn't regulate any of it. And I have 12 volts coming out of the battery, but these run on 5 volts. So I went to uh, Amazon, and I'll post a link in the description of this video. And I ended up purchasing, see if you can get a close look at it, a 5-pack of these buck converters. And what you do is bring in 12 volts. And let me see if I can show you the package here. So there's the package. It can go from 12 volts. And uh, once you bring in 12 volts, you can pull out of that 9 volts or 5 volts. And it has a little uh, potentiometer. Let's see if I can show you the potentiometer on there. It's right here. And you simply adjust that one, and it gives you the proper voltage you need. So I ended up taking this one, bringing in 12 volts to it, adjusting it to 5 volts, and now it's it's uh, been stuck on here on the back of this board uh, with double-sided sticky tape, and it puts out 5 volts, and it's wired directly into the contactor. So now all I did was was brought in the fan circuit, which is right here, into this contactor and the output is going out to the fans which are spliced together so that works pretty well and i like the way it came together next we'll talk about the solar charge controller the solar charge controller there's already a link in the description for the first video i'll try to get it on this video as well uh, this charge controller came from amazon i believe it was 10.99 it is a 20 amp solar charge controller, so it can take in uh, about 100 watts uh, solar panel and charge the battery. I've already tested it, and we're going to show the test video right now. So now I'm going to try hooking up the solar panels to the charge controller right here. So here we go. It's plugged in. And charge controller is working. You can see the solar panels right there blinking, charging the battery. And now we unplug it. So, uh, where is it? Right there. Unplug it. And it goes back to normal. So, as you can see, this charge controller not only is it not taking up too much space, but it also does its job, it does what it's designed to do. It helps charge the battery and our connector is over on this side if you can see it here uh, this connector is a um, I'm gonna put a link in the description I don't remember the exact dimensions for it right now but it's the most conventional plug for solar panels and that's what I'm going with and this connector just screws on it has a lock ring and the wire comes around this side and comes into the charge controller. And now we have an output going out to the battery. 
uh, which I ended up using spade connectors for the battery and I'll show those uh, up close later. And so this charge controller does all the work of charging the battery and it does have a float charge and it's set to 13.7 volts. The next part is this fuse block. So this fuse block came from Amazon as well. It was an inexpensive um, automotive fuse block. And what I did was I created some kind of a bus on this side, just uh, with number 12 wire. And this wire is just jumping all the way across. So this is my hot side and this is my load side on this side. So we ended up with a spare. And here we see the 12 volt socket was wired in, uh, the USB charger, LED lights, the second USB charger, the fan circuit, and we have a spare circuit um, to run anything else. Uh, I couldn't think of anything else to add. I would like to end up using the circuit, but for now, we have a spare. The next portion is the inverter. I ended up going with this configuration. As it puts it over to one side, it gives it this large opening behind it where it can blow out some of that hot air. And this inverter, so far, I've tested it a couple of times. Eventually, I will do a field test video to, to show you. And hopefully, I can do a lapse time uh, video of, of it discharging, how well it's going to do. But this one does cut out at 10.5 volts when it reaches 10.5. It's going to beep. The light will turn on consistently. And it's no longer going to make an output. So this is a nice little inverter for the price. And the link is also in the description. And for this next portion, what we have is a 12 volt charger to charge the sealed lead acid battery that's going to be in this compartment. And so here we have the input from 120 volts. It goes in to this, to this cable that was included with the charger. It goes all the way around and the charger is going to get um, attached to this portion here. And right here it's going to continue on and circle around to the battery. And there it's going to charge the battery and part of that circuit is going to go back to this switch which I actually have the output right here. So that way I can turn off the charger. But this is a charger we're going to end up using. And now let's get back to the box. So since I plan on using double sided sticky tape or adhesive uh, and it's this 3M roll, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and remove any contaminants with rubbing alcohol. So if you have alcohol wipes, that's even better. But I just have a big bottle of alcohol. So I'm going to use a paper towel, some alcohol. Go ahead and clean this area. Let it dry very well. And then clean up the part of the charger that's going to stick on. Just to make sure we can guarantee a, a better adhesive here. So. And for this next part, just so I don't have to struggle with it, I went ahead and put it on a vise. Uh, you can put it on a table or whatever is going to help you keep this still so you can get a better measurement for your tape. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to stick it on and cut it with some scissors. So let's go ahead and put this adhesive on. What you'll find when you work with this stuff is that to remove this, this uh, film, it usually lifts the adhesive just because it's stuck on so tight. So what I have found that works for me usually is I use a razor blade and just catch it on one of the sides and lift it up and that usually does the trick, but let's see if it does it this time. So I'm going to start from the back to the front. That way I don't, I don't touch the adhesive. And if I do touch it, I don't contaminate it. So here we have it. It's prepared with its adhesive. This area has been cleaned, uh, decontaminated from any oil or any dust. 
So now I removed all three of the strips. And now there's there's no measuring going on here. I'm just going to center it the best I can in the general vicinity of uh, where I want to put it. But I'm going to go ahead and connect the cable and make sure that I'm not going to put it to where I can't plug in the cable. As this is not going to come out of here until it probably dies. So I'm just going to try to line it up the best I can. Make sure I'm not interrupting my cover here for the fuse block. And that looks to be like a good spot. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some pressure. Now what I'm going to do in this next part, you don't have to do it, but I recommend that you get some kind of a clamp just to promote better adhesion. There we go. Put it closer to the edges. All right, so now that the charger is at its final resting place, I've gone ahead and routed this wire off camera, but basically I'm just running it through here. Just squeezing it into the sides. And then I'm gonna get a general measurement. Basically what I'm gonna to try to do is strip it somewhere around here, all the way out so I can have my ground sticking out on this side. And then hopefully I can replace this wire with uh, with the wire coming out of here, or I'm just gonna splice right into it. I'll decide as I go, uh, just depending on how much I wanna strip out of this. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna cut it to where it can go to the battery and back to the switch, just in case I decide to use the full length of it. So I can go ahead and cut it here. And I'm confident now that I have just enough length to be able to get to the battery and back to the switch, just in case I need to, to get some extra wire. All right, so now that I have my, my wire measured, I'm gonna go ahead and route it where it needs to go. That way I don't have to pull it back later. It's gonna go under this plug around the back here and then I'll pull it this way that way it can also tie wrap or zip tie into this whole group of wires so let's go ahead and strip it uh, let me measure again just to be sure okay this seems like a good spot so I'm gonna go ahead and drop that section right in the center of the stripper and here we go all right so that went ahead and separated it now we're going to pull the jacket completely off of there all right there it came out there's this powder again so i guess we have to remove this stuff i don't know so now that we have this i am going to go ahead and put some heat shrink on here just to protect this this jacket in this portion so I'm gonna get the heat shrink and I'll be right back all right so now the wire is protected here I can go ahead and take my red and separate it out and put my connector on there and then it'll connect right here and then this will all zip tie up here and be protected later so let me go ahead and do that now and this one I can leave it long it doesn't matter this is gonna get tie wrapped anyway so it can loop all the way back and then come back some it doesn't matter but having a few inches of slack will help in the future if I need to get a bigger battery or I change the whole battery pack system so I'll go ahead and cut it here and since I have my mechanical strippers out I'll go ahead and use this one. I'll strip a little more off of there. All right. Twist the wires together. Now when I'm doing this small of a wire, although this connector is made for this size, I still want to Make sure I keep all the strands together. So I take the very tip of it 
and just bend it forward a bit and even better if you want you can you can tin this wire and it's going to help you make a better connection but there once i see it come out just a little bit i know that's going to be what's going to stop it in the event that it ever gets pulled so since it's a red one we'll go ahead and crimp it with the red and get it nice and tight on there all right we have a good crimp feels good so go ahead and connect that here all right it's a nice snug fit this one's already heat shrinked so there's very minimal exposure here and that's completely fine so now what we have is just to recap everything that's gone on I installed the charger the charger wire is routing around to this side the power side is splicing into this portion that's going back to the switch out of the switch we have the wire that's going to terminate into the battery which is right here this is going to be our output and then our ground is going straight into the ground bar and this is where all the ground is shared for the for the whole setup so this is the main wire number 10 uh, i'm sorry a 10 gauge going into the battery and then the 10 is also being used on this side for the inverter so what i'm going to do next is get the battery set in we're going to put our cover back on this terminal block get the battery situated strapped in and then do a test on this battery charger so i'll be right back to do that lower the battery into its tray and it fits right in just like a glove so now the first thing we're going to do is connect our ground now that our ground's connected this is the ground coming from the solar charge controller and we're going to be able to see our voltage right there next we're going to take our power side which is right over here this is the power side coming from the charger so this one i'm going to just solder it directly onto the onto the battery um, just because I don't want to take up terminal space with this wire. It's easy to solder on and, and remove later. So I'm going to go ahead and get the soldering iron and just heat this up a little bit. This wire is already tinned and the terminal is already tinned. So here we go. There we go. Just a few seconds of heat. We don't want to transfer too much heat into the battery. And now this is secured on there. So now this wire is secured, our ground is secured, and now we need a power um, going into the battery. And uh, all we're going to be able to do right now is measure the voltage uh, because we don't have the rest of it connected. So here we go. And now you can see here, uh, yes you can see it, 12.9 volts is what we're getting right now. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the 120 volts to the outside of the box. Then we're going to flip the switch and see what effect we get right here. So let's do that next. So for this next portion, I am going to go ahead and remove this clamp. Just to make sure I'm not pushing on any components. I don't know uh, what's directly behind this and I don't want to mess with it. So now we're going to take our plug and this is a connector. 120 volts this is plugged into the wall right now so just make sure our connectors are nice and tight on there and then plug this into the outside there we go so now let's see if the light helps any no okay so now we're going to go ahead and flip the switch and see what that does for us so here we go So now we start to see the voltage go up a little bit. I'm not sure if the battery is full right now. If it is full, it's just going to go to float charge, uh, which it looks like that's what it's doing, 13.8. Um, so if the battery needs any, any charge, if it's going to accept any, 
it's going to climb up to 14.4, I believe, or 14.2. And when it gets full, then it's going to come back down to float charge at 13.8. So let's go ahead and watch this for a few minutes and see what it's going to do. So it looks like it's just going to continue charging. It's been a few minutes now. And uh, I'm not going to let this continue um, just because it could be an hour from now that the battery gets full. But right now I am going to reposition the camera so you can see the lights here. Uh, what happens when the charger is turned off or when it's turned on. Alright, now that I've repositioned the camera, I'm going to turn off this bench, uh, the bench light. So you can get a better look at the lights on here. And I'll try to simultaneously turn on the... Uh, the backlight for the solar charge controller. So you can see on the solar charge controller we're showing 13.3 volts. So now I'm gonna hit the switch to to bring some current from the charger into this red wire and I'll try to have the backlight on at the same time. So now you saw the red light come on on this side and we quickly jumped up to 14.5 volts where now we know we're effectively charging this battery with this charger and it's doing its job so I'm gonna let it run overnight and tomorrow we'll pick up on this video where we left off and continue going around this box and look at everything that that I've installed on it so far and then we'll continue from there so now we're back uh, we left off at this battery charger and now it's been two days since I installed the battery charger and since then I've drained the battery twice and recharged it it's done very well it reaches uh, it reaches the float charge voltage and it just stays there uh, it doesn't go down or up from there so the charger is doing really good and now what we're gonna do is finish up the wiring clean it up use some tie wraps against these sticky backs and once we get the wiring all cleaned up, then I'll go again um, back to explaining the different components and hopefully finishing off um, with a bench test of the, of the inverter. And then after that, I'll follow up with a final video of a field test and actually putting it through its paces, draining the battery, and hopefully getting a lapse time video of the battery draining and watching this whole thing do its job. So let's go ahead and get this wiring going.
All right, it looks like we're about done with the wiring. All that's left is to plug in the solar charge controller and bend this brand new spade connector into position. Since we don't want to bend this back and forth too much, just bend it once you know where it's going to go finally. And that way our solar charge controller is plugged in at all time. Uh, we can plug in at any time to charge it and we can also get a reading anytime we open up the box. So that's it for the wiring. The wiring is complete. And now we're going to go ahead and get a close up of some of the components that I haven't talked about yet. The next component we're going to look at is this 12 volt 100 amp automotive relay. I'll post a link in the description below. This one did not go factored into the cost of building it. Initially, I was going to go with a breaker and I had already installed it. But I decided to go ahead and use a relay so that way I don't have to open the, the box anytime I want to energize it. I can just go ahead and use a button on the drop multimeter. So the way this is terminated is on pin 85 we have the negative coming from the CT relay circuit. On pin 86 we have the positive coming from the CT relay circuit. On pin 30 we have the incoming from the battery. And we also have the incoming from the CT. And this is what energizes the CT and also measures the voltage through the DROC multimeter. On the outgoing side, pin 87, we have the outgoing voltage to the inverter and outgoing voltage to the fuse box, which is going through this. See if you can see it on camera. Yeah, this one right here. So this is a, a uh, 12 gauge wire that's taking the 12 volts from the outgoing side to the fuse box. And then on the fuse box, we have jumpers going to each side of the, of the hot side. And then on the load side, we just bring in the individual circuits. So that's it for this relay. This relay will uh, cut out at 100 amps if it senses anything above that. And it'll also be controlled from the outside of the portable power station. So the next thing we're going to look at is this DROC multimeter. There will be a link in the description below for this one. And so this is the, the meter here, but the brains of the operation is actually this CT. And this hollow sensor, what it's doing, it's, it's measuring the, the wattage or the current moving through this cable. And it's also controlling the relay. This is the relay circuit right here. Let's get a closer look at it. That's the relay circuit right there. And on this side, we can also use external voltage to energize the whole thing. But we're using this wire here to energize it. And that way, this one is also used to measure. So the last component we're going to be looking at is this DROC DC multimeter. What this is going to do is it's going to read the voltage, give us a current draw, battery capacity, remaining battery amperage, and wattage usage. We'll also be able to set some of these parameters to operate the relay. I'm going to make a separate video on this multimeter because there aren't too many videos online and I haven't found one that gives you a full inside look of how to set it up and what everything means. So far, the only way I've gotten to get familiar with it is by using it and noticing some patterns in it and getting to understand it because the in instructions that are included with it aren't very clear. So now just to show you how to operate the relay from here, you move the cursor up or down to out. And once you're on out, select OK and you can hear the relay close. You can hear it open. For the bench test and for the field test, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and make a separate video just to not make this video too long. Uh, so as always, I thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of this build.